Good day to you in the Lord's grace. I'm Pastor Johan. This is the midweek recharge for February 10 in the year of our Lord 2021, entitled No Alleluias in Lent. Based on the Hebrew word Halleluya, meaning praise the Lord, Alleluia has been a word of great praise to God in the life of the church. Because of the penitential character of the season of Lent, in the Western Church and in the Eastern Church, singing or saying Alleluia has historically been suspended during Lent's 40 days, which are quickly coming up now on Ash Wednesday, February 17th. This period of individual and congregational reflection on the quality of our baptismal faith and life suggests that the joyful nature of Alleluia is more appropriately reserved for our Easter celebrations when it's given full and jubilant voice. The omission, or at least the lessening, of Alleluia's during Lent goes back at least to the 5th century in the church. The custom of actually bidding it farewell, however, developed in the Middle Ages. The hymn, Alleluia, Song of Gladness, contains a translation of an 11th century Latin text that compares an Alleluia less Lent to the exile of the Israelites in Babylon. The text then anticipates the joy of Easter when glad Alleluias will return in all their heavenly splendor. And along with a sung Hallelujah or sung farewell to Hallelujah, some congregations have embraced the practice of physically burying the Alleluia, a banner or other visual presentation of the Alleluia is crafted and then physically buried in a place on campus. Now this ritual practice can be especially delightful and meaningful for children. So when do we bury the Alleluia? Well, the Alleluia is appropriately bid farewell on the Sunday preceding Ash Wednesday, also known as the Transfiguration Day of our Lord, and called the last Sunday after the Epiphany in the liturgical calendar. This is the last Sunday when Alleluia are used until Easter. This year, that day is February 14th, this coming Sunday. The burial of the Alleluia could otherwise be the culminating activity at a congregational carnival, also known as Shrove Tuesday, and that celebration is just before Ash Wednesday. And how do we make an Alleluia to bury a Sunday school confirmation class or children's choir might be invited to construct an Alleluia using a long sheet of good quality paper. Pairs of students could be responsible for designing and creating each of the words eight letters. Or a congregational sewing group or craft group might consider creating a fabric Alleluia banner. Such a creation might be carried in a procession but might just as effectively be designed to resemble a table runner in length and width so that it could be rolled rather than folded when put away. And how do we bury the Alleluia? If a simple suspension of the Alleluia during Lent is all that is desired, the burial or farewell might simply consist of singing Alleluia Song of Gladness. And that's the sending hymn on the Sunday preceding Ash Wednesday. Now, if a physical burying of the Alleluia is desired, the recessional would move to that location outdoors. Otherwise, the banner could be placed in a suitable container somewhere inside the worship space. And if you're burying the Alleluia outdoors, the banner and poster could be placed in some sturdy box. Creative ways to celebrate the farewell of the Alleluias until Easter. So... It's appropriate, uh, is it appropriate, to use Alleluia's at funerals during Lent? A question I get every once in a while. And that decision will need to be made in an informed and intentional manner by local congregations. The historic practice of most liturgical churches is to fast from Alleluia's at funerals during Lent. However, Christian funerals properly recall and celebrate our death and resurrection with Christ in baptism anyway. Christian funerals always proclaim the resurrection, pointing us toward Easter 
and toward the promise of eternal life with God. Because of their Easter orientation, it seems reasonable and even pastoral to conclude that funerals may appropriately suspend the rule against using alleluias during Lent. So Lent is the season that invites us more than any other to a repentant, reflective posture, to a changing pattern in our lives, to a new dimension of devotion to our Lord. So Lent is that period of preparation for the celebration of the resurrection of our Lord on Easter. Each year on Ash Wednesday, the liturgy of the church calls us to begin a holy season of prayerful and penitential reflection when our attention is especially directed to the holy sufferings and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. The words used in the Ash Wednesday rite of the Lutheran Church also reminds us that from ancient times, the season of Lent has been kept as a time of special devotion, self-denial, humble repentance, born of a faithful heart that dwells confidently on his word and draws from it life and hope. Each of the seasons of the church year is observed and celebrated, but Lent, and only Lent, is, quote, kept. Interesting. The holy season of invite, invites us to be keepers, the people of God who keep the fast, keep the silence, keep the focus throughout this singular season. The custom of keeping the fast in Lent has been part of the holy observance of the season from its very beginnings. The biblical precedent for this custom is reflected in the very first hymn in the Lent section of the hymnal. The hymn writer, Claudia Herneman, starts with a reference to the time of Jesus' temptation in the wilderness. She begins, O Lord, throughout these 40 days. You know that tune? O Lord, throughout these 40 days, you prayed and kept the fast. In the final stanza of the hymn, however, she makes a thoughtful transition. She writes, be with us through this season, Lord. Be with us through this season, Lord. What the hymn writer skillfully does is link the 40 days of Lent with the 40 days of, that Jesus spent in the wilderness in prayer and fasting with the inference that for those who would follow Jesus, Lent is a parallel experience. The idea of the special nature of these 40 days is reflected in the English word quarantine, a word with which we become personally familiar. That word connotes a time of separation from and special attention to the daily sequence of activity for the restoration of health and well-being. For Christians in previous centuries, the quarantine of those 40 days of Lent included going without regular meals for a period of time. That custom is still observed in various parts of Christendom today. Fasting may be observed on one or more specific days of the week, often Tuesday and Friday, when food is limited to one meal each day. Now back in the Middle Ages, the time for that one meal was set at noon. And that's spelled N-O-N-E, but sounds like K-N-O-W-N, known the ninth hour of the Roman day, three o'clock in the afternoon. Over the course of time, this single daily meal was moved to, an, to earlier in the day, but its time name remained. And known became the word noon in our common English usage. In the early church, people fasted for different lengths of time and abstained from various foods. In the year 604 letter to Bishop Augustine of Canterbury, St. Gregory wrote, We abstain from flesh meat and from all things that come from flesh, as milk, cheese, and eggs. Part of the evidence about the church's uh, customs back in those days. In its observance, however, the style of fasting was never to eclipse the purpose of fasting a spiritual discipline with a positive purpose. In the small catechism and elsewhere, Dr. Martin Luther commends the practice of fasting in a number of his writings. In our day and age, some popular health experts promote the medicinal value of occasional fasting. For Christians, however, to keep the fast 
is to follow in the footsteps of Jesus in the wilderness, finding blessing and spiritual benefit in purposeful self-denial during Lent. Another spiritual dynamic of Lent is that it's a time to keep the silence in reflection and devotion. The word alleluia not being used is an expression of praise, as an expression of praise, is a part of this dynamic of keeping the silence. Our vocal and instrumental music is much more reflective and subdued than usual. Purple, the liturgical color customarily appointed for Lent, is regarded as the most quiet of the colors used throughout the church here and is associated with penitence and sorrow. In many churches, the cru crosses, crucifixes, and other religious artwork is veiled, covered with a transparent cloth throughout the 40 days to mute their brilliance and to add a solemn tone to the worship space. In some of these spaces, families also cover religious paintings and wall hangings in their homes. Times of silence for personal reflection and prayer before individual family devotions have special meaning, also in Lent. The words of one of the great Lutheran hymns of Lent serve as a call to an extra measure of devotion and prayer. Jesus, I will ponder now on your holy passion. With your spirit me endow for such meditation. From him 440. Today, establishing a proper setting for such reflection in our fast paced and noisy world may take extra determination. And finding that place and observing that time, however, is another central component of the discipline of the holy season of Lent, and it's worth more than the effort. The days and weeks of Lent call us to keep the focus of our lives and our faith on Jesus, our Lord, and to learn more of him and his loving plan of salvation for us. One of the classic hymn stanzas of the church portrays that proper focus in this petition to the Lord. And here's hymn number 422 to illustrate that. Dan LaMaestra is accompanying us, so please join us in praising the Lord. Beautiful lyrics and chord progression that comes across as repentant. In the early centuries of the church, the season before Easter was used to teach the faith to people who desired to convert to Christianity and asked to be baptized or confirmed. The process of catechesis included a time when the candidates for confirmation were questioned about their understanding of what they had been taught regarding the basics of the faith. In Latin, this sequence of inquiries was called scrutinia, from which our English word scrutiny is derived. At certain times during Lent, the greatest treasures of the faith were shared with the candidates, including the creed, the Lord's prayer. The gospel account of the suffering and death of Jesus to pay the penalty for the sins of all mankind was told simply and directly as being of the greatest importance as it still is. The observance of a holy Lent has a sacred purpose and can be of great benefit to each one of us. As we keep the fast, keep the silence, and keep the focus of Lent, it becomes a fuller and more meaningful season for you, for us. Amen. Let's pray. Dear Father in heaven, 
for the sake of your beloved Son and in the power of your Holy Spirit. Please richly bless this coming Lenten tide for us so that we may come to Easter with glad hearts and keep the feast in sincerity and truth. Lead us in our repentance. Lead us in our dialogue with you. Lead us in our listening to you and our sacrifices for your sake. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now as you meditate on God's word and this devotion, may this forthcoming music be your helper during this Lent, which is to shortly come as you listen, repent, fast, give, serve, forgive, and pray. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you always.